his honour again to speak to you. I do appreciate it. And I'm speaking on behalf of Love Baptist Church. I'm grateful to the pastor for allowing me to speak to you. When I look at television, watch the news and so on, I see bright young people, boys and girls, and I think, well, they must be taking their GCSE soon. And I'm quite mistaken because it, it turns out that they're professors at prestigious universities. But somehow or other, they've, they've cornered the market in some speciality and uh, are world authorities on this particular thing. The world is their oyster. They've ferreted out some pearl of learning and now they, they go from country to country to give to the people the benefit of their learning. Uh, they've, uh, they've got it all departmentalised categorised, tabulated, synthesised and parcelled down into little gobbits of learning so that we might take them like um, a pill before breakfast in doses that we can manage. It's all rather daunting because I've plodded away all my life, slowly, diligently, trying to get hold of the facts I'm studying. And it's all been a slow, laborious business. I say laborious, I've enjoyed it, but what have I got for it? Here are these young people riding high in success, well good for them, but there's one aspect of consideration that I think bamboozles even them. In order to explain what I mean, do, do forgive me, I have to use three dreadful words. I hope you're sitting down before I speak them and a cup of hot tea might uh, soothe your shattered nerves before I use these three dreadful words. Well, are you ready? Here they are. Thee, thou, thine. Those are three dreadful words. Do you remember when we used to have hymn books? Well, editors of hymn books with a bright scarlet pen in their hand would go through the manuscripts and cross out every reference, thee or thou or thine. Oh, we have to be up to date. Nobody will understand this archaic turn of phrase. It's, uh, it's not up to the minute. We have to be with it. We can't use these dreadful words. 
I think of the hymn, Jesu, thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of life, thou light of men, from the best bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to thee again. I don't know what the editors have made of that, and oh, don't tell me. It's a pity, really, because thee and thou and thine are singular. They're addressed to one person. Thee. Sometimes we miss out what the Bible means because of our inhibition for the use of the words thee or thou or thine. In Luke chapter 22 there's a narrative of the Saviour and he's, he's at the Last Supper. He's instituting the Gospel Ordinance of Communion. And he's speaking with his disciples. And at one point, addressing Simon Peter, but in reference to all the disciples, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that's all of you, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. He speaks specifically to Simon Peter, I have prayed for thee. There's a, there's a line in, in McChain's writing where he speaks of what strength he would draw if he could hear the Saviour in the next room praying for him. And the Saviour prays for you. I mean, for thee. There's a verse in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3 goes like this. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And it's so specific, it's so direct. The Lord has appeared, says uh, Jeremiah, to me. This is his word, to me. I've loved thee with an everlasting love. My love for thee, Jeremiah. It began, it began long before birth, long before your life began. My love for thee is everlasting love. And long after your days in this world are completed, my love will still be there. It is an everlasting love. And it is with loving kindness that I've drawn me. I've shaped my circumstances. I've, I've moved in my ways to bring thee to myself. I love thee. It, it, it's so specific. It's so precise. It's so exact. And that's the believers, the Christians, 
experience. I think I may go further. It's a Christian's inspiration. The Saviour says, I love thee. Thou art mine. In John 17, the Saviour says, Those that were thine, he says to the Father, thou gavest me. And um, there is this, this sense of, of belonging. I love thee, says God. I love thee. I think there's some measure of misunderstanding about this. There, there, there's a reluctance in some quarters to refer to, to God's love for us. It's regarded as um, indulgent, unjudging morally and spiritually indefinite um, sentimental for us to believe to be told God loves thee um, and I think there are some preachers who take this position in the pulpit, but they take a, an absolutely different position in their own hands. For when some dreadful illness assails someone whom they love, then commensurately there is their tremendous love for their loved one together with their absolute hatred of the thing that is destroying them and that's always the case God says I love thee but together with that is is a an indescribable hatred of the thing that mars us and ruins us and spoils us and separates us from him. And there's always this, this love of God is commensurate with his hatred of our sin. That's why God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What hatred of sin that God was willing for our salvation, for sacrifice of his own son. You see what it means? I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I can't bear the things that are marring you and spoiling you and ruining you. I love you too much. I will do everything to set you free. So, with that in mind, there are two applications to this. And uh, I share them with you first. A heartfelt prayer that other people will come to hear the voice of God 
saying I have loved thee with an everlasting love. To tell you the truth, I have three grandsons, and every morning, every evening, every passing moment, with all my heart, I pray that the voice of God will speak to my boys, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. See, I think that's the, the prompting of the Spirit in the heart. Don't you think so? Isn't that how you pray for those whom you love? Your own kith and kindred and far wider. It's such a ministry of prayer and such a glorious God to whom we pray. That's the first application. The second is this, to rejoice in the fact that the statement, Jeremiah 31 verse 3, is printed. Do you hear me? It's printed. Sometimes you, you go into a room and somebody has a framed uh, indication of some achievement. Well, we can share their gladness and their pride in it. But here's something printed. And if it's not framed on your wall, frame it in your heart. This is printed. Can I quote one of Shakespeare's sonnets. You see, sometimes in Shakespeare's sonnets, it, he uses a device to build up one gloomy fact after another, after another, after another, until you think, oof, there's no way out of this. And then, in the last two lines, he just shatters it all. Now I don't know what Shakespeare meant when he wrote these words, but I know what I mean when I quote them. Since brass, nor stone, nor earth, nor boundless sea, but sad mortality or sways their power, how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea whose action is no stronger than a flower. Oh, how shall summer's honey breath hold out against the wrackful siege of battering days when rocks impregnable are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong, but time decays. Oh, fearful meditation. Where, alack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? Or who his spoil of beauty can forbid? Oh, no. Unless this miracle have might that in black ink my love may still shine bright. I have a Bible here. My father and mother gave it to me when I was a boy of seventeen or thereabouts. Like me, 
it's falling to bits now. But it's a Bible they gave me and I love it. I used to go out when I was a boy of 17 to the villages around the city where I lived. For in those long gone days there was a Baptist chapel in every village. And oh, pity help them. I went as a boy of 17 and took services and I took this Bible and printed there Jeremiah 31 verse 3 as black today as it was when my parents gave it to me. Behold, I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness I have drawn thee it's printed may God's name be praised but there it is may God 